Welcome to another computer craft video. The goal of today's video is going to be showing how to make a simple little redstone analog output controller. I have the slider here. You can see it's set to one, one down there. And if I drag it to something like six, we can see that six of these light up. And then of course it goes back. The other kind of cool thing about this user interface is it drags around, which blows my mind how simple it is to make something like that work. And it's powered by this basalt user interface framework that you see on my left here. This is their wiki. It's a pretty new project and I wanted to make a tutorial on how to kind of start doing simple things because when I first looked at it I was very overwhelmed because I'm a beginner programmer and maybe this video could help somebody else out who's trying to learn because as far as complication goes it seems to be pretty easy and they even advertise it as a easy to understand ui framework and you can see the demo here that's been running in the left i was going to use pastebin to write my program and then download it into computer craft it works really well and if you have a free account you keep the same file name and it's really kind of handy these advertisements and stuff on the side here really take away my screen space for typing i'll stick with github pastebin's probably easier Looking at the wiki, always a good place to start. They have a little install script that automatically downloads the UI framework if it's missing. And they have it right here. So I will copy that, and I will paste it into here. I like to break it up like this because this tells me this require part is part of my program, and then this junk is basically, whoops, control Z. This chunk is just looking for the basalt lua. Personal preference doesn't matter. I'm going to save this. Raw. I copy this URL up here. Do wget paste it. I'll just call this redstone lua. Okay, if I go edit redstone lua, here it is. And paste bins easier for sure. As you can see, here's an example of them using Pastebin. Control R. Good news, it should be downloading. Finished. So now if I run it again, it should just end. Okay, cool. Program finished. Press any key to continue. So that means the basalt file, the package has been installed. I just learned this the other day. Um, home and end on the keyboard. If I push end, End of line, it takes me there, hit enter. Kind of a cool way for jumping back and forth instead of having to scroll with the arrow keys. Now what else? Quick start example. So this is definitely new to me, this notation down here. I quite like it, but at the beginning I thought it was a little weird. But here's the example, a fully functional example. They require the dependency, they make a main frame. It's the main canvas and they talk a little bit about it in here with these comments, so definitely worth a read. Basalt.create frame. So I'm not going to include a name in here. See how they have mainframe? I was reading the Discord. There was a conversation earlier where they said if you don't give it a unique name, as they talk about in here, it makes a UID, like an automatic unique identifier. Um, for more complex programs, it probably matters to give things a name. You can easily address or call them. But for this simple program I'm making, it's not important. What's interesting, though, is after you make this mainframe, you can call show to actually make it show to the user like this. But down here, they talk about a more cleaner way to do it. You make the frame at the very end you can append these colons and show this method or function whatever it is it's kind of cleaner as they say and then for this button you can just chain them all together like this which is actually kind of slick instead of having to type button all the time i quite like this style and most of their examples on their example page actually show kind of notation like that i guess they don't that example. This one. Yeah, this one does. Instead of using tabs, I'm going to do a space because of my small little computer craft terminal. We can call the show. 
we click on objects, they have show hidden away in here, but basically they just say it shows the object. The parent frame is already visible. This down here is XML. It's kind of, I want to call it advanced right now because I don't know how it works, but basically it lets you draw stuff on the screen in other ways. Instead of using Lua, you can load XML files. If you're more curious about that, if you go to this Preview 2 Lua file and this XML example, you'll see how it all works together. But for right now, I don't know how that works. Now, as a test here, I just want to run this. Control S, Control R. So that's great. Program finished, no errors. Now I would say the next piece of text that's pretty important for making this user interface thing work is the auto update. Because it's basically indefinitely looping at this point. So by adding this, it's always going to do an update and it keeps the user interface program running. So if I save it and I run it, that's just a basic frame. And just to show that this main function is actually doing something, if we do a set, roll R, we will see that the frame is now blue. And in the interest of over explaining everything, if we go back to the objects, we can actually see set background is here. And it tells me right here how to use it. And of course, um, Computercraft has both the American and the correct way of spelling it right there. Well, the next thing I want to do, besides having my main frame, that everything is drawn on, I want to have, I guess, a sub one. Main colon add frame. And then again, I could have given it a name like subframe, reference it later. But after learning what I learned yesterday in the Discord, I don't have to give it a name if I don't need to. I guess I'll just type a few things out here and then I'll talk about them after. So here's my subframe. I'm going to set the position to start at 2 and 2. The main frame, if you don't specify it, defaults at 1 and 1. And so I didn't have to specify it up here. I could have, but it's pointless. And then 2 and 2 basically means it's going to indent 1. And then if you set the overall size to width minus 2 and height minus 2, you can actually shrink it from this direction. The first position is shrinking it from here. The second one is shrinking it this way. And I'm setting a color just so it's obvious which frame is which. Here we have a blue one. Here we have a light blue one. Now you'll notice this W and this H. Where did those come from? Those are variables that I have to declare now. If I just run the program as it is, Control S, Control R, we'll see at line 16, it's not happy, which is right here, line 16. Local W H equals terminal dot get size. Control S, Control R. Cool. So now we see that position two and two, and then the total width, total height minus two. And if we didn't minus the two from them, we would see that uh, it's probably going to go out of bounds. Yeah, we can't see it. It just goes off the screen. And at this point, it's purely cosmetic what I'm messing around with. In the interest of over explaining everything, if we go to CC Tweaked, uh, also known as Computer Craft, here we see the libraries or APIs, whatever they are. Uh, I guess they give you more info in the colors one. And this is where you get the correct spelling colors.blue, colors.lightblue, see how it's capitalized, all that stuff matters. Cool. Now if we go down to set size, see they give you a story as to how that works. And notice too in the examples they put them all in one line. You could totally do that, but for this screen it makes more sense for me to build the project uh, vertically. There's all kinds of stuff, and if you don't set them, they just uh, go to the default values. The next thing I want to do, because here's my main frame, here's my subframe, is I just want to have another frame that I can drag around, and the only reason to do that is just because I thought it looked cool. There's no reason for it. Local redstone frame equals 
sub add frame and again I'm not going to give it a name I guess I could just because redstone frame it has to be unique is my understanding I could not make another frame and call it this okay so looking at the first property here we're going to set I'm actually going to set it at one and one and this is kind of interesting is because the one and one is relation to the subframe not the main frame so if we run this I guess what it's done is it's drawn over the entire subframe because we didn't give it a size and it's gray. If I give it a width of 25 and a height of 5, if we run this now, it's just a tiny little guy. And see how it starts right in the corner? I suppose I could have drawn it at a minus 1 and 1 and it maybe would have went backwards, I don't know. I don't know if you get an out-of-bounds thing. It cuts it off. Interesting. Probably because of maybe the show it's layered. I don't really know. So the next thing I want to set is set movable. And this is actually spelt wrong, but I don't think they've updated it yet. And it is spelt wrong in the, uh, in the actual program. But if we go to... I think it's frames. We go to frames here. Set movable. So this is actually the correct spelling, but the other day I was reading the Discord, you have to use this spelling. Until they fix it. Yeah, so it's still not fixed yet. And I guess you can drag it right off the screen. Interesting. Now, as far as I can tell, too, all of these properties, the order doesn't matter, but I don't know that for sure. I just, I haven't noticed, or I haven't ran into a situation where it matters. So yeah, we have our red square now by setting the background red. It, it helps me to visualize when I'm playing out with this, what layer I'm on and how it's drawing everything, just to make sure. I think it also helps troubleshoot if, if you draw a layer and it disappears on you, you can tell easily if it's different colors. So this chunk of code right here is going to be just me setting up the frames. I haven't really drawn anything on it yet. I just realized that I'm still outputting a redstone signal because of the last time my example program ran. I might as well just reset the computer so it gets rid of that. I knew there was a reason I labeled this one. So now we want to add stuff to the redstone frame. And it's a lot easier. Actually, that's not true. Is it our frame or is it redstone frame? I don't know which one I have to address. Let's just try our frame first. Probably have to spell it right. So I want to add a label to it. Which again, is probably in here somewhere. Add label. And I don't see it. Ah, label, it's got its own section. I guess that method's not in here too. I don't know where they hide it. I would love if this documentation was, um, was searchable. And I suppose it might be if I went on Google. So if I do a set text, control S, control R. But for my own curiosity, if I type redstone in here, control S, control R, there's the error that I get. So I don't actually know what the purpose of this is. I'll have to ask. The next thing I want to add is a slider. You know, I guess they just tell you right here, if I go into the slider part of the wiki, it just shows you, you add the slider. Ah, uh, you can even give it a name, too. Lots of weird ways of doing things that I don't fully understand. Set. Position. One. Two. Control S. Control R. Cool. So now we have a slider. It doesn't do anything. It's just drawn on the screen. Next thing I want to do is actually add a variable because when I change that slider position, I actually want it to write to a variable. And that should be up here at the top. 
redstone analog equals this piece of code I'm going to type up here, this variable that's going to store the actual redstone strength. I've kind of ripped this from the one of the examples on the GitHub. But basically, the variable is going to equal whatever's in the label. I'm just trying to work out the best way to explain this, this example. There's an events thing down here where on change is a type of event. Here's an example, but you also have click, click up, scroll, all, all kinds of events that, that fire things. I go back here. I want to do an on change one. Now I can't begin to explain this notation. I've just seen examples of it and maybe I will learn, but for right now it works and that's all I care about. This might be easier to parse if it was all on one line, like basically this function, and all functions have to have an end, and it's all part of like this bracket is with this bracket, and maybe it's easier to digest if it's all one line, but because this is a small screen, I'm kind of breaking it down like that. Control S, Control R. I guess we didn't really do the next step. There's nothing to see. So I guess what's happening here too is on the slider, when it changes, it's going to tell the redstone analog to set its text to a different value. But I can't read this right now. I suppose I could do a basalt.debug redstone analog, I think. Debug, table, aha. It's showing a table because this is not simply a value. It's like an object. Just erase this line. At the risk of going down a rabbit hole, I always like to do this loop to loop through. I don't know if there's a better way, but I quickly just write this for loop, to loop through this thing, this table, and print the key and the value. So here we go. Aha, uh -huh. so of that redstone analog variable that I made, these are all the keys and the values of it. These are just functions. I don't exactly know how to interpret this. The key takeaway is this is not a simple integer. I guess I'm actually looking at a label because we're saying the redstone analog equals a label and that's all the different properties of a label you could set. Okay, the code so far, I'm going to take a step back here. Control R. I'm actually drawing a label, but I don't think it's appearing because it's actually showing up under this text. So I want to go back and fix that. Okay, so this line goes way off track. It's kind of awkward to look at. If I go enter and then space. Perfect. Control S, Control R. That's pretty cool. We change this from one to eight. It changes the label that we were drawing. And I didn't see it before because I don't think I had a position. It was drawing it here and then it just gets erased because this gets drawn over top of it. So now we actually want to make this number change the redstone. Now, of course, this part, again, I don't really understand function self very well. I vaguely understand it, but not enough to attempt to explain it. I've just looked at enough examples that it seems to work. We can autocomplete that. Left. So I'll pause right here. I'll go to computer craft, or CC tweaked rather, go to the wiki there. If we look at the set analog output, we have a side and a value, and it's expecting a string and then a number between 0 and 15. If it doesn't get that, it throws a fault. So here's our string, left, which is the left side of the terminal. 
Now, if I was to do a self get value, we're actually going to get an error here. Because I think what's happening is it's referring to self, which is redstone analog, I believe. And it's getting the value because this label has a value of one right now. And then here, the slider, we click on it, we actually change its value. So control S, control R, it's going to fault. And the reason is, is because this value is actually a string. So if we use the two number function, I hit end on the keyboard to go to the end of it, throw my last bracket in. Kind of confusing to look at, but there's three closing brackets. The two number takes a string to a number. So control S, control R. Another mistake. I forgot the closing end of this function in the closing bracket. Control S, Control R. Look at that, it worked. Crank it to eight. And of course, I don't have eight lamps there, so you can't tell. If I crank it down to five, you'll see there's five. But what's interesting though is this only allows me to go to eight. Power one, power zero. That's no good. What we want to do to the slider is change a property of it. So we got set max. Set max value of 15, control S, control R. That's interesting. It actually does decimals. Weird. But 15, you can trust, does go all the way to 15. So that's actually where it gets a little confusing because even though it's a slider, it's also an object and you can set the size. So if we set the size to 15 by 1, as you can see that it takes a width and a height. Control S, Control R, it's now a lot wider, and you get the full range of motion, and it increments up by 1. No silly decimals. Now I might want to make that label a little further away, so I'll bump it up to 18, a little cleaner. I'll put a 3, I'll put a 3, cool. Now another interesting thing that I could add here is the debugging. And I actually used this a lot, Basalt Debug, when I was learning this, or actually writing this little program. Interesting, it's drawing a bunch of tables. Because I passed it an entire object again. Instead of doing that, I think you can actually refer to itself as self because we are in here and when we change it we can say get value control s control r so it won't show anything until we've actually done the on change event and then it's actually going to show what's happening and you can click on here and of course get a history which is really cool so if we reboot this here's the one catch we rebooted the computer We run it. Notice how it says a one. There's no output here. I don't know the best way to fix this, but the way that I've done it redstone dot set analog output left the one. Because basically, when we're first drawing our label, we're setting it to one. And just to make it match up, I'll do that. I could have it right off, but that's not really the point of this video. Now we turn this off and turn it back on. Run it. The other thing too for moving, if you click here, 
it doesn't really interact well. If you click here though, you can drag it around. Now if I move this slider down one, the three, O S, O R. I forgot that one. Still doesn't because of the text, I guess. To drag a frame, it has to be the top row, but it can't have another object in the way. So if I want to lower this, now it's easily grabbable because there's no objects in the way. I'll post this to uh to pastebin.